What's going on everyone? Golden Ticket to History coming to you from a cemetery. A cemetery right outside of Orlando, Florida. A cemetery I've been to a couple times before. You've uh, seen, I believe I've done three videos here previously. This would be the fourth video done here. There is a lot of uh, pretty famous people interred here at the cemetery. And uh, so each time I come here, I try to hit up as many as I can. However, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't want to interfere with services and stuff like that. So you always want to take and be respectful. So I try not to, to intervene during services. So for example, if there's a final resting place in the same vicinity as a service, I will just postpone going to see that final resting place until a different day where potentially there is not a service going on. But we're here to look at the final resting place of a pretty famous person, especially someone who uh, follows 1970s, 1980s rock, specifically hard rock, and in some cases even one of the founding fathers of what would eventually become metal. There is a final resting place of an individual here, of a front man, the lead singer of a 1970s metal band that uh, some people may or may not even realize is actually buried here. You know, uh, when you think of different metal bands, a lot of names come to, to mind. When you think of hard rock bands, especially in the 70s and 80s, there's a lot of names, there's a lot of visuals that you see. You think of the long hair, the leather pants, the jackets, the grungy, pre-grungy look. You know, sometimes the makeup and stuff like that. There's a lot of things that come to mind. There's a lot of reasons behind that. Various different singers throughout that time period really kind of connected themselves to that persona. But the gentleman we're looking at here today was kind of a band that was ahead of their time. People made the argument that if they would have been around, say, 15 years later, the potential impact they could have had on music could have been exponentially higher than what it ended up being. Without further ado, here we are at the final resting place of Guy Speranza. Guy Speranza was the leading frontman of the 1970s hard rock metal band Riot. As you see here, his final resting place is in the form of a niche. If, uh, for those of you who don't know what a niche is, essentially it's when someone decides to be cremated, placed in an urn or other type of compartment, and then eventually buried in the ground. What we have here is a niche garden. To some individuals, they, maybe they feel that having a full bearer is a waste of space in some cases. Maybe it's a spiritual thing. Various different people have different opinions as to why they decide to take cremation over full casket burials. But either way, this is the final resting place of Guy Speranza. Next to him, we have Mary Speranza and Salvatore Speranza. I'm assuming potentially maybe his parents. I have to do a little more research into that. I'll put a voiceover in providing more context into whether or not that's his parents or not. Based off of the ages, it seems there's a good chance that they could be Guy's parents. Guy Speranza was the original lead singer for the New York heavy metal band Riot, which was formed in 1973. The band struggled to make it and won the verge of breaking up when in 1981 the band began to find their audience thanks to what would be called the new wave of British heavy metal, which brought heavy metal to the mainstream. They began touring with such popular acts such as ACDC and Molly Hatchet and were soon signed to Capitol Records. Speranza sang on Riot's first three albums, but left the band soon after the release of their Capital One debut in 1981. He later retired from music and moved to Florida, where he became an exterminator. 
Guy Sprander was 47 years old when he passed away of pancreatic cancer on November 8, 2003 in Orlando, Florida. As always, I like to take and make sure that I leave a penny showing that I've paid my respects to these individuals. Sit right here in the corner. So yes, I'm gonna walk around this niche garden a little bit, and uh, so you guys can kind of see some of it. You know, as I always say, I go on these adventures for my own personal enjoyment, as well as an opportunity for me to take those of you who don't have the opportunities to travel to these places to be able to see and experience these experiences that you may not always be able to experience at other times. So yeah, so Guy Speranza was the lead singer originally of Riot and some people have some different opinions and there's different uh, views on Riot. Some people view the band Riot as being one of the most unlucky, in some cases maybe even cursed bands of the 1970s in relations to all the misfortunes that they they went through. I'm going to add in some voiceovers and some videos kind of providing a little more context into that. For those of you who don't know who Guy Speranza is, so that way you can gain a greater understanding of who the man was behind the mic. But yeah, so I just want to take an opportunity to come out here and show you the final resting place of Guy Speranza. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, when people don't really think about what happens to these famous people when they pass on. You know, someone who may seem as being untouchable in life is essentially a short drive away in death. If you enjoyed this video, if you liked this video, make sure to hit that bell and subscribe and uh, let me leave some comments let me know what you like what you disliked what you'd like to see in the future you know uh, there's definitely these things on my list that i want to to look at but i'm also open to suggestions especially some some cases i may not always know what uh what's around me you know sometimes there's roadside oddities there's homes there's backstories there's murders, there's true crime, there's different videos that come through, and there's different final resting places that may be in my backyard that I may not even know exists. So, so yeah, as always, continue to look for the history and film, and uh, see you guys on the road the next time.